Song of Solomon, chapter 6, please. We're in the Song of Solomon. We've got a few more, uh, six more, um, uh, six more uh, sermons left in our series on Song of Solomon. I've been liking it. Amen. And uh, Song of Solomon is a very good and meaty book on how our relationship ought to be with God. So many people, they have a, a very shallow relationship with God. They're what we would call a CNE Christian, not Canadian National Exhibition, uh, but Christmas, New Year's, and Easter. They go to church three times a year. They only call upon God when they need something from Him, and they don't read the Bible. They don't pray. They don't uh, thank God for much. They just are going through the motions. Or they may come to church every week and, and on the outside be, yeah, amen, but on the inside, full of dead man's bones. Folks, listen to me. I don't know about you, but I want to be, a, uh, I wanna be what, we, what we would call an elite soldier for Christ, a special forces soldier for God, amen? One that God, if God wants something done, he call, goes down and says, I know Cameron Payne will do it for me. You want to be that type of person? How many of you want to be that type of person? Give, give me an amen. Amen. Then you need to have a proper relationship with God. Uh, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 4. Let me read just down to verse 10. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read and you just follow along. Actually, let's read responsively. We'll read four together and, uh, and then we'll read uh, every other one. You can read with me down to verse 10. Ready? Let's read. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tezra, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Turn away thine eyes from me, for they have overcome me. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep which go up from the washing. Thereof every one beareth twins, and there is not one that beareth among them. As a piece of pomegranate are thy temples with thy locks. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bare her. The daughters saw her and, ple and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. I like verse 9. It says, and she is the choice one of her that bare her. How many, uh, who bared her? Who, who, who had her in captivity? King Solomon. How many wives did he have? Wives and concubines? He had a thousand women. How many men in this room tonight think that was pretty stupid? Amen. God bless you. A thousand women is pretty dumb. And God thought of it that way too. But out of that thousand women, his favorite was the Shulamite girl. We do not know her name because, and I believe the reason why we don't know the Shulamite's name is because the Shulamite pictures a every Christian what we ought to be. Solomon pictures the world, and the, or the devil, sorry, and the concubines picture the world, but the Shulamite girl really had her heart set on her shepherd boy. And who does the shepherd boy uh, picture? Jesus Christ. Our eyes need to be totally fixed upon Jesus. Uh, we sing a song, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful great face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Do you realize Jesus is the best person and He is a person that you can get to know? He is the best hero you can emulate. 
you know, this day and age, everybody's got like their sports heroes and their music heroes and their whatever heroes on the wall. Um, I actually have a bunch of preachers that I have uh, pictures of. I, 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 I don't know. My wife probably, my wife knows where everything is. She in the house. She does. Amen. Um, where is this, dear? It's right here. Or if I ask her, you know, if I ask her where my keys are, where'd you leave them last? <laughs> if I knew, I wouldn't have had to ask you. Amen. Uh, but uh, all kidding aside, I have pictures of, of he- my heroes of the faith. And, but you know what? My biggest hero of the faith is Jesus Christ. Uh, now, my heroes of the faith, those are men that emulated Jesus Christ. They walked like Christ would have walked. Or like, sorry, like Christ walked. Solomon wanted this Shulamite girl more than anything. More than anyone, he wanted her. He apparently heard her desire for her shepherd boy, and at this point in time, he breaks into the conversation. Remember, Song of Solomon is all, there's a whole bunch of little conversations. Now it's King Solomon's turn to say, hey, wait a minute, I want to speak here. And this is not the first time it has happened, but... Back in chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, he did the same thing after the Shulamite spoke to her shepherd, uh, spoke of her shepherd to the daughters of Jerusalem. It seems as if he was going to let the shepherd get, was not going to let the shepherd get the upper hand in wooing his beautiful young lady. Listen to me, folks. The devil does the same thing. God, when he blesses us, the devil says, you know what? I'm losing them. I'm losing them. So he steps in and says, but look at what I can give you. Um, The devil can give you nothing but misery and heartache. He will maybe dangle some carrots in front of you that look good to eat, but are rotten to the core. How many people, how many people have ever went apple picking? Um, and and you, I love apple picking. This year, uh, where we pick our apples because they had a frost, there's no apples. And I'm like, no, I love apple picking. But it, sometimes you pick an apple. Have you ever picked an apple and it looked good on one side, but then you turned it around and there's a wormhole? I, I, I did that one time, and uh, I went to go, I, I went to eat it, and something, because you know, when you pick, you know, one, one apple for the bag, one apple for me, <laughs> you know, and uh, I went to eat it, and something just told me to turn it around, and you know, I turned it around, you know what was looking at me? A little worm. Actually, it wasn't so little, I pulled it out, and that puppy was long. I actually broke the apple open, and I would have bit into the worm. Yum, yum. It looked beautiful. It was a big, looked big, juicy apple, but there was a worm inside. And the devil will do that. The devil will give you something that looks really good and really tasty and really beautiful, but wait till you get it. And sometimes when you get it, it's too late. It's way too late because then you are hooked. Many years ago, I was counseling this young man at another, from another church. His pastor said that, I, that, um, that he wanted him to counsel with me, so I, I counseled with him. He, he, he started dating this girl, but little did he know, she looked good on the outside. She said all the right words. She smelt the right, right, right way. She dressed the right way. She talked the right way. She went to church, she was a soul winner, but little did he know she was evil. She did not like her mom and dad much. And she, all she wanted to do is to get pregnant so she could leave her, her parents and to be with a guy. And he found out too late. 
Found out too late. He did not sleep with her, but she accused him of it after he said no. Now, nothing came of it, and his life could have been ruined, but bless the Lord, just before, just before, he found out. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 9 to 11, Solomon voiced his great admiration of this young maiden. He said, I have compared thee, my love, to the company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels. Thy neck with chains of gold. I will make thee borders of gold and studs of silver. In other words, he was going to give her all the jewels, all the money. She was going to look even more beautiful. She was going to be the most beautiful dressed woman in the land. In other words, he promised her the moon. And the devil will promise you the moon until you, and he'll give it to you until you buck him. And then he'll go, and he'll pull it all away, and you'll be left with nothing. See, it is the king himself that addressed her here and, and, and reveals a great ab admiration for this young lady. And he saw her different than any other woman in his harem. However, he does not only speak of her appearance. After he addresses her in this way, he expresses all uh, that, that all she wants is her shepherd boy. Solomon not only breaks into the conversation, he tries to use similar words used by the shepherd as he speaks of the Shulamite. Remember in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, the shepherd expresses what he saw in the Shulamite. Uh, though this girl was not perfect to him, he was, or she was, sorry. He loved everything about her. He loved her from head to toe, and he mentioned her eyes, her hair, her teeth, her lips, her speech, her temples, her, necks, her, her neck, and her bosom, just as the, the, the King Solomon did. Now listen to me. Back in the Garden of Eden... If you, if you read back in, in Genesis, uh, the serpent, which was controlled by the devil, he said, yea, hath God said. Uh, you shall not eat of every uh, tr fruit of the tree of uh, the garden. He didn't say a lie that was totally out of the way. In other words, totally polar opposite. The devil mixes lies with a bit of truth to get you hooked. You know, if I said, if I came up right now and, and preached something way far out of the way, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that only men, uh, only men will, sit, will sit at the marriage supper of the lambs. Now, I don't believe that, but if, if I said that, you would think, man, I'm kind of a little bit wacky and nuts and probably shouldn't listen to me. But because that's way far out of the way. But see, if I a a a a a person who stands behind a pulpit or whatever else stands just anywhere, they and the devil does this as well. He mixes a little bit in, just a little bit in, a little bit of lie, and 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 he gets you gradually, and gets you gradually. Listen to me, folks. If you give the devil an inch. He will take a mile. Actually, I'm going to rephrase that. If you give the devil a millimeter, he will take a mile. You give him a little bit, he'll take you. Um, it's like, uh, have you ever seen a, uh, I, I like watching these predator shows where uh, crocodiles go and get, uh, go and get, uh, uh, going to get another, like another animal and, and, uh, uh, uh uh, or a, uh, a lion goes to, you know, get its prey. I love those shows. You know, I, I cheer for the underdog, you know, sometimes. Run, antelope, run! And there's a lioness going to get him. Um, that lioness, once she has her claws in that antelope or whatever they are eating, it's over. It's over. And once the devil has his claws in you, it's over. 
And the devil you will not find wearing a red suit, smelling like sulfur with horns on his head and a pitchfork and, and a tail. The devil actually, in, when he was in heaven, was the most beautiful angel. He was one of the most beautiful creatures in heaven. But he got his knickers in a knot and was too big for his britches. And God says, uh-uh, I'm God, out of here. I'm paraphrasing and putting it into the pain vernacular tonight. But that, now, that brings us to this, this song, our text today, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 4 to 10. Uh, Solomon pours out the same flatteries that the, Shulamite, or that the shepherd boy did. He mentioned he, not, not to be outdone by this lowly peon of a shepherd. This, this, this shepherd boy. He commented her in the same way. He commented her about her beauty, her eyes, her hair, her teeth, her temples, her purity. Solomon could only hope that his deceitful words were enough to dissuade this, this girl away from her lover to himself. And the devil does the same thing. You know, when people come to our church and they, they I, I had somebody this week uh, email me about coming to our church and they, they're in their, in their church that they're at, um, they, they, they do a lot. They're, he's, the, he's the song leader and, and, he's, and, and, and his wife is the piano player and, 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 and they, they just, they, they, they want to come and I have no idea who these folks are. They go to a decent church. Um, I have no idea who these are, but they want to come into our church and do the same thing. I never offer that. I never say, oh, great, God bless you. Yeah, man, yo, yeah. Well, first of all, we have a piano player. First of all, we have a song leader. Now, I'd like to give up the song leading and have somebody else lead it. But I'm not going to offer it right away. Because I'm not going to be the one, the ones that dangle a carrot and if, to, to somebody that I do not know. And this, this, this song, the Solomon was trying to woo this girl over to his side, and we ought not to try to woo. We ought not to try to fall to the wooings of the devil. I mentioned earlier in this study that there are three enemies we face every day when our relationship comes to be with the Lord. Those enemies are mentioned in... Actually, can you edit that part out just back up there for a second because I didn't mention it. There are three enemies. that we face every day when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. Those enemies are mentioned in, in, song, in, in John chapter 2, verse 16. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. These three things I want to give to you tonight. Number one, the enemy, first enemy we, 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 um, we face, and by the way, all these enemies are, comes from within. They're, they're from us. First of all, they are our flesh. The Bible says, In our flesh dwelleth no good things. Everybody in this room tonight, and everybody listening that's going to listen to this on the internet, and everybody that's, that's ever walked the face of this earth is a sinner. In our flesh dwelleth no good things. We are all bent towards sin, no matter what. We all are. It is easier in a lot of cases to sin than to do right. Because the majority of people are not doing right. How many, there's 200 some residents here? I think 200, no, 196 or something like that. We don't have 196. Is going to the right church the right thing to do? Absolutely. Wouldn't you like to see every resident down here, the whole services, every service? I would love that. But we don't have that. There is 98th, 
thousand people in Brantford. I'd love to have a church of 98,000. 94,000, my wife says, 94,000. I'd love to have a church of 94,000. Amen? How many people would like to see that? <laughs> Getting to know everybody's name would be kind of hard. Number 127. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd love to see that. But our flesh, we're always bent towards sin. It is a f- we, f- we war every day against our flesh. Do you know, uh, one of the reasons why I think that people shed is because we're supposed to, we shed our skin. Do you ever realize that? Do, do you, how many people knew we shed our skin? Like, well, not like snakes, bless God, you know, wake up and there's a whole, <laughs> hello, I'd be freaked out at that point in time. But we shed our skin little parts at a time. Do you know the reason why I believe God allows us to, sh- that God has us to shed our skin? Is because we are supposed to shed our sin. We're supposed to shed it away and throw it away. You know, if you have a big piece of skin, you don't, you, hopefully, you don't save and put it in a photo album. Amen. Just put it in a photo album. Save it for the rest of your life. What do you do? You throw it away. And that's what we're supposed to do. Our flesh dwells no good thing, so we ought not to trust our flesh. Would you try, how many people would trust a blind taxi driver? You'd be dumb to, <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. Do you know where you're going? Yes. Can you see where you're going? No, but I, I can feel it. Amen. Um, I, I wouldn't trust that. You know, these, these cars that, you know, you press a button and they automatically back you in the spot. I'd, I've, I've driven one. I rented one. Um, I'd never use it. Sorry, I, I didn't use it. When we were in, in Niagara Falls, I, I could have pressed the button. <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I don't trust it. Just as I don't trust my flesh. You should never trust your flesh. Never get into a battle in your flesh. It'd be like going to war with a BB gun or a squirt gun. You know, don't do that. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against dollar, uh, ruler, uh, uh, Rulers of this wicked world, I messed that verse, but we wrestle against a higher power that's, that's, that's Satan that, that, we, that, that knows our flesh. He knows where to push. Number two, not only do, uh, is, is the first enemy is our eye, our flesh, but the second one is our eyes. Do you know more sin is done with this than probably anything else? Even more than the, word, the tongue. More of our sin, you know, uh, a pretty girl walks by, a pretty guy walks by, and what do you see? Um, Pastor Sam Abraham, one of my former pastors, he's now with the Lord. Um, We used to go down to downtown Toronto and hand out gospel tracts. And when, when we had lunch, we used to sit down at the Eaton Center on the outskirts of the, uh, uh, on the outside of the, uh, the, the, the food court. And we used to watch people walk by. And we used to, if there were a girl walk by, we used to watch the guy's reaction. And one day, there was a guy, a couple of guys walking, and there was a, a few girls walking the other way, and they were not dressed the most appropriate. And the guys, they turned around, and next thing you know, there was the sign and the, the, the head, the sign was the tall as the guy's head. And you heard, and then you heard everybody laughing. We did. I, I, I literally fell off my chair laughing so hard. But our, the lust of our eyes gets us into trouble. Do you know there's more crime in theft than there is any other crime? There's more crime created with the eye or committed with the eyes than there is than any other crime. Actually, all crime starts with the eyes. Our uh, ladies, that means you better be careful how you dress. Ladies, do you realize you have the power to make a man go to his knees in sin? You do, by the way you dress. 
And even you ladies that are home here, be careful how you dress. Men, be careful how you dress. Be careful where you put your eyes. You know, a horse that, how, how, many, people have ever, how many people have ever watched horse racing? I love to watch the Kentucky Derby and the, the Belmont and the Preakness Stakes. I love to, and the Queen's Play. I love to watch horse racing. And a horse that has a problem with looking around, they put blinders on them. So all they can see is straight ahead. There could be anything going off at the side, and they won't see it. They just see straight ahead. That is what we need to do. We need to put our blinders on in our eyes to make sure we only see what God wants us to see. Don't be like a, 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 a dog. You know a dog has a very short attention span? You ever seen the movie Up? The cartoon movie Up? You've, we've seen it. Yeah, we've seen it. And where, where the dog is talking around, he's, and he sees the little squirrel goes by, and squirrel. You know, and, and he, that's what we sometimes do with our eyes. Something just catches us, and our eyes, the lust of the eyes. By the way, anything that is in the world is not good. The Bible says we're, supposed to be, uh, we're not supposed to be part of the world. We are in the world, but we're not supposed to be part of it. And the third thing is the pri- uh, our pride. Pride is thinking something, think that you're something that you're not. I have dealt with Christian businessmen that think they're something that they're not. I don't deal with them anymore. I really don't. I'm thinking of a guy, a business out, up, in, up in Kitchener that I don't deal with because the guy has pride. Contin- just pride. I'm thinking of a, just, just, just businessmen that I've, I've talked to that, uh, and maybe it just, you just look and they, it's just, they ooze pride. Do you know what? When we realize of who we just are and who he is, the pride will go away. You know who you are, and you know who I am? A sinner that deserves hell. That's it. That's it. That's all we are. We are a sinner that deserves hell. You may hold a position of power, but that's the position that is honored. One of the things, and our church, our church has been going 11 years, we've never done this, and I never get bothered by it, is October. Do you know what October is? Anyone know what October is? Good, you don't know what it is. It's Pastor Appreciation Month. We've never done it. Never have, and I'm not asking you to do it, and I hope you don't do it. You know why? Is because I don't want to get a big head. I know you appreciate everything that we do. I do. My wife does. I don't need a way fanfare. Whoop de doo. I got an email. Pastors, how to celebrate Pastor Appreciation Month. I replied back, do your job. <laughs> Simply do your job. Amen. The world and all its allurement and are, are very influential in our lives and sometimes too influential. Fashion. You know, last week, uh, Tuesday, was the first day of school. And man, everybody had to have new clothes. You couldn't wear the clothes you ever wore before. Second day, who cares? The first day, always new clothes. And, you know, I drove by the high school one of the, high, one of the many high, worldly high schools here. I drove by around lunchtime, and it was like a fashion show. They're like, eh, look at... And, and, and I had, happened to stop at the light, and it was a nice warm day, so I rolled down my windows, and I could hear, oh, nice outfit. Oh, it looks so pretty. And you look, oh, and then I'm like going, eh, eh. you know, I want to throw up. And I, I actually, as I was driving away, I said... 
Did you go to school to look good or to learn? You know, I just kind of just said that as I drove away. But, you know, and you, know, you see them looking around. But see, the world's allurements are the, the allurements of Satan. He is on the losing side. Amen? You know, um, the Chicago Blackhawks, who did they beat in the Stanley Cup? Do you remember? Nobody remembers who they, who they beat. You know, they hung their head with shame. They didn't go on the announcement and say, yeah, we're the first losers. We're number two. There was no picture of them going, like, oh, yeah, number two. They were. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on the losing side in any battle. I played, uh, I played football with my daughter. I lost. I was upset. <laughs> like, oh, man. She beat me. I was upset. I don't like to lose. But whenever we go to the devil's allurements, we lose. Every time. Every time we lose. And by the way, we lose valuable things. The allurements of Satan are more than just lies or twisted truth. The, his wiles are well thought out craftiness and well targeted strikes. He knows what he is doing to allure us away from our shepherd boy. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, verse one, it says, "Wherefore take on, uh, where, uh, sorry, put on, put on to you the whole, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil." Wiles are cunning arts of deceitfulness and trickery. The devil is a master of trickery. He is. You ever seen, you ever seen uh, 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 magic and how they do things? And you ever go, how did they do that? The devil's the same way. He will make the trick look beautiful like it's actually what you ought to do. And you'll fall for it. And we ought not to fall for it because anything in him is evil. Would you, how many people would go up and hug a pig? Would you go up and hug a dirty pig? Like a pig, as in not, not a person pig, but a, a, pig, a pig with a pointed, and like a nose. Would you go up and hug a dirty pig? Go kiss it on the lips? No, we do that with the devil's tricks. He is a dirty, rotten scoundrel. I like what Tom Bauckham said. He's a smutty face. He's a smutty face. And just as the devil will do that, or just as Solomon, it's just as the devil will do that with anybody, he will target you and I. If he can't get me off track, he'll get you off track. That will affect me. Do you realize, Mr. Tim, if you, if, if you stop coming to church and you stop uh, praying and you stop uh, you know, loving the Lord, do you realize that it will affect me? Same with you. Same with every one of you. Rose, the same with you. If you, oh, you know, I'm not, I've given up on God. You know it will affect me. If the devil can't get me off track, he'll try to get you off track to get me off track. It's the same with a family. If you can't get mom and dad off track, you'll get the kids. The devil is smarter than you. He has well-targeted strikes. And if we put our defenses down, those strikes will hit. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Just as, uh, sorry, this is just what Solomon was trying to do with the Shulamite, with his words. He wanted the thought of leaving her shepherd boy to be a pleasant, a pleasant one. The Satan will ha have the thought of leaving our shepherd boy, Jesus Christ, a pleasant thought. There's a young man that came to our church, and he got mad, and he left. And he thought, you know what? It's pleasant. I'm right. Do I think he's in the will of God? I absolutely do not. 
You look at his life, and he's absolutely out of the will of God. And the devil won. It was a girl. I actually saw him a while back, and he said, you know what? He said, I made the mistake. The girl's gone, and I made a mistake. He said, can I come back? I said, you absolutely can. He said, you can come back anytime. I said, but we will be watching, but you can come back. In Proverbs chapter 7 is another story. And I want to close with this Bible illustration. With verses 21 and 22 of the the story of the unvirtuous woman. It says, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as the, a fool to the correction of the stocks. Just like the wiles of the devil, the wiles of this unvirtuous woman were well thought out, cunningly maneuvered, artistically crafted, deceitfully done. Satan is well aware of what it will take to turn your heart away from God and to him. By the way, Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. The unvirtuous woman knew what strings to pull in the heart of this simple young man. Solomon knew, uh, thought that he knew what would pull the strings of the heart of the Shulamite girl, but she didn't buckle. Satan knows what the strings to pull over our hearts. Are you going to buckle? See, for Eve, it was the lust of the flesh. For Achan, it was the lust of the eyes. And for King Uz. Uzo, it was the pride of life. Which one do you have a problem with? God knew what would turn Solomon's heart away, Solomon's heart away from the Lord. It was mainly women. When he dis- disregarded the Lord's warning, the Bible says in 1 Kings 11.4, it says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other small g-gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of of David, his father. One time, Solomon, his heart was right. But Satan knew what strings to pull. Ah, he's got a problem with women. And he pulled that string. Let me ask you a question tonight. What string is God, uh, is Satan pulling with you? What string is Satan pulling with you? Maybe it's for you ladies, maybe it's men. For you men, maybe it's women. Maybe for, for, for us it's, 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 it's a job or, or money or position or power. Are you going to let him? You better guard that string because he will destroy you. As I said earlier in this message, a path that Satan pulls you down will always lead to destruction. I'm thinking of a young lady. I'll say this story and then I'm done. Think of a lo- young lady when I was in, in, in a high school uh, she was in my youth group, the youth group that I got saved at. This young boy that she met, she, he wooed her. And she was warned by our pastor that he was bad. And that he was evil. And that he was no good. And yet, she didn't heed to it. And she went to him and she got married and they had some kids. Little did she know that he cheated on her over and over and over again. He actually cheated on her on her wedding day with him. He's nowhere to be found. She's got the kids. And her life is ruined.
By the way, the kids do not like mom because she's bitter. She didn't listen. And Satan knew that string to pull. And she bit. She bit. Hook, line, and sinker. And a destroyed life. My dear friends, I'm here to tell you, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, Satan will pull a string. If you've got breath in your lungs, Satan knows which string to pull, and you better guard that string and say, get away. Best way you guard it, by getting, having a right relationship with God. How do you have a right, 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 right relationship with God? Be in the book. Be in the Word. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, O God. I mean, I harp on memorizing the Bible. You know, there are times I can, I can quote a verse and Miss Rose can end it. For all have sinned and come. For whosoever shall call upon the... If we confess our sins, He is? And to cleanse us? That's right. She, why? Why do you think she... Is she a perfect person? No, I think she's a great Christian. I really do. I think she's a great Christian. But you know what? Why do you think she has such a, a good Christian attitude? It's because she has this word hid in her heart. When Satan comes... A verse pops in her head and she goes, ah, stay away from that. Does that happen to you? Or are you like a dog returning to its own vomit? I will not illustrate it for those who have weak stomachs. And Sarah's going, amen. Thank you. But for a dog returning to its own vomit, what do they do with the vomit? They eat it. And that's our sin. We return back to our sin every time. It's disgusting when a dog re eats its vomit. Amen? Everyone's have that picture in their head. <laughs> and it's disgusting when a, saint, when a Christian, a child of God, return to its vomit of, their vomit of their sin. They just keep going back. Amen? Hopefully you don't. So what string do you need to say, Satan, you can't have that? Move that end of that string to God's side rather than Satan's side, and he can't get it to it.